I'm back at it again, diving headfirst into another render shell. This time, completely changing my approach to how I'm building my shot. Normally, I'd rely heavily on Maya to assemble and render a scene, but recently, I've been all about that Houdini life, and wanted to try to do as much of it as I possibly can in Houdini, and more specifically, in Solaris, Houdini's lighting tool. I veered so far off of my original concept with this one, it's not even funny. Originally, I wanted some super brightly colored topiary maze environment with a foreground character in a bright pink dress, and somehow ended up with a deep sea ghost pirate necromancer in a puffy lobster coat. So, here's to hoping that my render didn't come out as nightmarish as the amalgamation of ideas that inspired it. I started by firing up Houdini and blocking in some effects. I knew off the bat that I wanted steps to build up as the character was walking, so I started scattering some points on the provided steps, putting together a quick growth solver, and animating the plants to grow as the character walks up the steps like some kind of ethereal gardener in the land of the dead. I then did something similar on the staircase itself, reversing the growth solver and using that as a base for a destruction simulation, which would start from the highest point of the steps, and then reversing the simulation cache to create the effect that we're rewinding time and the steps are building themselves, just because I think it's cool. If it's good enough for Christopher Nolan, it's good enough for me. At some point, I thought it would be cool to build the stairs from a pile of hundreds of dead creature skulls, because nothing screams bright, colorful topiary maze like a pile of rotting bones. So I did just that, and used the same setup to destroy the pile of skulls that I scattered onto the stairs by converting the base stair mesh into a volume and scattering across the volume. To add a little bit of extra subtle detail, I scattered some points on a few of the skulls that start and I a bit of wispy smoke with a pyro solver to make it seem as if the skulls are kicking up dust as they roll off the ground. From there, I needed to block in the environment, so I generated a height field with some generic noise patterns, painted certain areas on the height field, creating creeks and mounds in all of the right places, and then eroded the whole thing, aging it, gracefully though, like a fine wine. I then generated some environment concepts that I liked with, um, and used it as a reference for a mid-ground arch that I sculpted in ZBrush, then projected the image in Substance Painter to get some simple textures on the thing so it didn't look flat. I explored some other options like growing vines along with the plants, but the payoff was minimal and the concept kept changing so inevitably scrapped the whole idea. The next step was to get started on the character. Originally I wanted a nice pink flowy dress, but of course after browsing through a bunch of potential reference images online, I decided that I wanted something a little less generic and more streetwear-ish, so I ended up trying my hand at modeling a puffy jacket robe in Marvel designer. The results at first were a little bit funky, but eventually I landed on something that I kind of liked. To bring the jacket to life, I rigged it to the base mocap animation's bones, painted the weights so that the trailing robe follows nicely, and then kicked out the base animation for simulation in Houdini. I used Houdini's vellum solver to simulate the cloth, generated a proxy mesh from the high-res robe geo, point deformed that onto the animated robe, simulated the proxy adding a low-res representation of the stairs and the animated body as colliders, and pinned the areas I didn't want to move around the neck and wrists, like a doll I was using for revenge on an ex. With that cached, I thought it'd be cool to start blocking in some lighting to get a sense of what the shot could look like. I set up a basic atmospheric fog and then immediately threw up a spotlight to get some juicy god rays shining on the foreground character. To test breaking up the god rays, I dug up whatever gobo filter texture I had, which happened to be some old caustic texture I had lying around. With that, I brought it into Nuke and roughly blocked in a color grade, and it's at that point when the shot was graded to be pretty dark and the caustics were shining as if through water onto a pile of skulls that I kind of fell in love with the idea idea of the underwater land of the dead, and the idea of brightly colored and living environment went to the graveyard. From there, I started going crazy, rigging a pirate hook, hat, tentacle arm, and coral around the hood in place of a fur collar to the character, simulating said tentacle once again in vellum to give the illusion that it's flowing in water, and maybe has a mind of its own. I then kitbashed together some bonefish from the kit of bones and skulls that I used for the stairs, generated a curve from the motion of the camera, jittered the points on the curve to create some offset, and instanced some bonefish onto to those points to give the illusion of some small fish swimming across camera. I also animated a few hero fish by adding an animated wave deformer to make them wiggle and look like they're swimming by the camera. I also threw a stock ship model in there and modified it a bit to get the silhouette and the look that I was after. Next, I decided to lazily cover up the seam caused by the clear cut from environment to sky with a massive sprawling smoke cloud with lightning strikes. So I used a pyro solver to simulate some large smoke clouds crawling towards camera and then used the lab's lightning tool to animate some lightning in the smoke that I timed to trigger whenever there was a lightning strike that hit. I converted the lightning to a mesh light in Solaris and animated that as well, adding some other supporting lightning lights that I also animated to flash and light up the smoke on impact. To maintain the visual weight of the stairwell, I animated some skulls on bone pikes that rotate and rise into place ahead of the formation of the skull steps, and modeled a rope in Maya by sweeping some tubes along a curve, animating the curve to follow the pikes, and adding another animated wave deformer to have it sway underwater, because I couldn't be bothered to actually sim it. To finish off the environment, I scattered a few thousand points in the foreground and on the arch, 
uh, and scattered some seaweed rock starfish models just randomly across the whole thing. Used the object ID and a material to slightly randomize the color of the skulls, generated a generic atmospheric smoke cloud strategically placed in the midground, and finally also simulated the sunken ship's flag in vellum as well. Oh, and finally, finally, scattered a bunch of tiny flakes randomly throughout the entire scene for some extra underwater particulate matter. I also animated two foreground tentacles early on in the shot for extra visual interest, because why not? The goal was to create narrative pacing throughout the shot, starting with the tentacles that reveal the bright coral pink focal point character, uh, who then looks towards their sunken ship, which in turn, along with the direction of the swimming fish, point towards the final reveal of the enormous kraken sea creature beyond the sandstorm as the lightning strikes. Lastly, mostly because I wanted an excuse to try out Embergen, since everyone participating was getting a month free during the course of the challenge, and because frankly it seemed like a bit of a pain to set up in Houdini, I isolated character's chin and used it as an emitter, then imported the robe and hat as a collider, and used that to create a wispy, glowing ghost smoke trail emitting from our ghost pirate's head. It was surprisingly quick and easy to set up a completely real-time simulation, and I was pretty content with the results considering how quickly I whipped it together. To light the shot, I animated the caustics coming from a few spotlights placed in the top left of the screen, shining down onto our hero character, added a warm light parented behind our ghost pirate to play with the teal and orange color palette, and hopefully help illustrate that he's bringing some life where he goes, shining light and growing plant life where he steps. Also added a subtle orange light right behind the ship to add some color and signify that the sunken ship belongs to our undead sea captain. A directional light for the overall environment highlights, and other subtle character light that was initially going to be a rim light, but the light linker was broken in my version of Arnold, so what can you do? I spread it out a little bit more for some extra highlights on the captain's rooms. I then animated a very large area light right behind the smoke sim to blast the entire scene and shine some rays through the clouds on a few frames towards the end that I would use to highlight the sea beast on a few frames in comp. It's still kind of wild to me that I can just throw all of this into a scene, keep my render samples low, and use an optics denoiser to navigate around my scene kind of freely, while resolving a fairly clean image pretty quickly. Normally, like I did on my previous entry, I'd break the render up into a ton of smaller render passes for compositing with cryptomats and really dial in each pass individually. Now this time, however, despite my better judgment, because I definitely wouldn't recommend working this way, I was just lazy and pressed on time, I rendered the whole thing out as a single beauty pass. That did, however, simplify the comp work significantly. I did some very basic arts and crafts style compositing a nuke, layering over an image patch for some color breakup in the sky, created it to be a little bit more blue, green, and contrasted, and used a toe node to lift the blacks and grade them to be a little bit more towards the blue side. I added some exponential glow and tracked and animated a lens flare to get some subtle hits in the bottom right corner of the screen whenever the light source seemed particularly bright. Finally, all that was left to do was generate an image of some eldritch Lovecraftian sea creature of the depth silhouetted in atmospheric fog, expand it in Photoshop, and track and animate it to be revealed in the background when the lightning strikes. And that's it, challenge complete. On to the next project. Feel free to follow if you're keen to see more of my work.